he I'm new to all of this. <laughs> I didn't understand any why Randall cycle activation is only a problem in mixed macros when fat alone can trigger it also. Hope somebody can help me understand. Thanks. Okay. The difference between a Randall cycle activation with mixed macros, you get this blockading effect which can last up to three days in some cases, depending on that. And it will be different between the different cells. All cells will be in a different state of and a different state of energy influx into their in inside them and also a different level of uh, what I call a gradient, the gradient of uh, um, Randall cycle activation. So, and how long, that means how, how much energy is in there and how much energy substrate is in the bloodstream will determine the signaling that will be sent to the cells to say, there's quite a bit in here. We need to engage the, the, engage this state a bit longer until the, it goes through the liver and gets converted to fat and gets stored, gets removed, this excess energy in the system. So that's the Randall cycle is actually a very helpful thing if you want to fatten up. So as an as a ancient person in the winter, um, before the winter started, in the late summer, early autumn, you know, there was fruit around and very fatty animals and it fattened up throughout um, through the, the warm months. And you go and hunt those and you eat um, fruit as well. And you end up storing fat more rapidly. There's a fish in the Amazon twice a year. It actually comes down from the depth up to when um, the Amazon actually um, gets, you know, because... I think it's two. There are two seasons where the entire Amazon basin sort of uh, becomes flooded, and at that stage, um, it's to different degrees, different parts of the Amazon. Obviously, what happens is these um, there are a number of fish. They come up, they eat fruit, they fatten up on the fructose because we know fructose creates liver fat, and unless you've got choline to export it out of the liver. It accumulates and builds up, and will get you know you'll get quite a bit of fatty liver and storage as a consequence of that. So, engaging the Randall cycle can have benefits. Now, you can, um, uh, in terms of having like really excess fats and all that, that is like for a small period of time. Once the clearance has happened, you'll get more dragged in. So the gradient is way lower the triggering effect so and that's because you what happens is you actually upregulate one pathway and downregulate the other pathway to such a level that the body can actually cope with bringing in you know so the influx um and gradient will be much lower you know all it will be is sort of it's a low grade activation as it's saying, oh, there's too, you know, we've got too much enough here. Let's oxidize this and then we'll take in an additional. But it's not blockaded. It's sort of more like a temporary, lower gradient, temporary type thing that actually happens, you know. And the same thing if you're in sugar burning mode, if you're like a low fat state, you know. So that's the two states. That, are, that basically normally disengage the Randall cycle unless you go into excess levels, which is really hard to do, especially if you're, if you're basically really efficient in either one of them to basically pull those substrates through. So, yes. So I wouldn't actually worry too much on the fat side um, on either one of them in that regard. So... That's the way I sort of view it. There are, you know, other complications. Mitochondrial dysfunction can lower the gradient. That means you can activate at a much lower gradient of energy influx, the Randall cycle, if you've got less capacity to oxidize it. So if you've done more mitochondrial damage and you've got a lot of reverse um, Krebs cycle 
activating happening and, and you're in a growth a growth stage where you're putting pulling h2 out of the cytosol which is the inner part of the um of the actual cell you're putting pulling deuterium basically you can drive growth factors and uh, so under those sort of circumstances you become less efficient you drop basically especially if you're if you go full uh, glycolytic you know and you're basically just burning sugar um oxidizing i mean sure then under those circumstances your efficiency of mitochondrial efficiency can drop from 40 percent down to 10 percent compared to oxidative phosphorylation um so, so really, you know, there is a gradient and that can be varied by a number of factors, you know, sort of your muscle mass can affect. So your metabolic rate. So is your muscle mass. So when you think metabolic rate, think muscle mass. So more muscle mass, higher metabolic rate. Low muscle mass, lower metabolic rate. So the biggest losers, they actually lose more muscle than fat. As a consequence, their metabolic rate goes down. And so they're stuffed. So we carnies, on the other hand, eat more leucine and taurine, and that actually increases our muscle, our protein synthesis, which means we get bigger muscles and also means we push up our metabolic rate. So there's a bit of an advantage there as well in that regard. But it's pretty much that when you take in both macros, you will affect the body actually just will down-regulate both pathways because there's too much of both substrates. But when one dominates against the other, it will down-regulate only the one pathway. Why it does it? Don't ask me. Nobody knows. It just happens. We know in terms of physiology that the GLUT receptors will be down-regulated when you're eating more um, fat, and the CD36 receptor will be up-regulated. So you'll be taking in more long chain fats to oxidize simple as that you know so those meta, um, enzymatic pathways will break it force it through the krebs cycle um and uh, into the mitochondria and away we go in producing you know both water and energy in that regard remember the krebs cycle is a water production system when it is rotating clockwise when it's anti-clockwise in the reverse that's when it's not doing that that's when it's pulling deuterium and pushing up growth pathways that's what happens to a lot of people who have got deranged mitochondria and then may even end up with cancer so what we need to do is we need to lower the threshold of mitochondrial damage from deuterium improve our sleep and stuff like that to get good better melatonin to repair our mitochondria and the stuff that needs to be knocked out we use synolytics i've done a whole lot of videos under the cancer ones you'll find a lot of those videos um, there's a playlist it goes into all that sort of stuff additional stuff but yeah that's fairly it on the randall cycle as far as it goes you know it's based on nutrient it detects nutrient influxes of energy substrates and the body signals appropriately and then there'll be signaling of hormones and all sorts of things that will be activated and play in and receptor sites will be down regulated or up regulated you know in that regard so that's how it works and if the noise coming from insulin is much higher this so insulin resistance is just signaling that's all it is they need it they use all these fancy words you know i mean it's x it's basically amplified insulin signaling that's all it is it's insulin resistance they need to name everything insulin isn't a bad guy it basically is just signaling and saying there's too much substrates in here you know the insulin to glucagon changes and says you know we got we need to deal with this that's what it's telling the body you know you've just done the wrong thing so yes but people call it all sorts of things because they don't understand most people don't understand the randall cycle but just remember that 
you will have a major down regulation of one receptor site when you're in low fat or low carb state. And when you're mixing, you will affect both receptor sites. And, to the, and the level of gradient will depend on the influx of energy at any one time. So it's pretty much the simplest way of putting it together. Hope that made sense. Order a mat for work. <laughs> 